This is, in That's fact, us. a live YouTube streaming video podcast yeah. by Star Wars fans for Star Wars fans. I think you're probably picking me up. We'll see. We'll see. Um, anyways, today we're going to be giving you our review of Shadows of the Sith by yeah. an author... <laughs> Under it's by the name, <laughs> um, Adam Christopher. Yeah, released June 28th of this year. Yeah. This? Yeah. <laughs> it was... Uh, it was fun. It was a story. <laughs> so, um, one thing that... Uh, we're doing this live because we had a, another engagement together. Mm. And, you know, we just <laughs> figured we'd do this all at once. Yeah, so why the fuck not? Wipe off all of the excess Vaseline mm -hmm. and then just sit down and, and uh, record this with all of you. This is basically our cold shower after what we just experienced. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It actually works better than a cold shower. It really <laughs> does. This will get rid of any lingering yeah. er erection like, <laughs> very well. The stress of being on camera. It's why I could never... Oh, I thought we were just talking about the book in general. Oh, I like this book. Yeah, it was okay. I, I will say it's probably the best thing they've done since the Aftermath series. Um, well, actually, no, because uh, that yeah. one Leia book came out after the Aftermath. Okay, so this yeah, is one all of the, the better Leia ones. Books, yeah, or all the Padme books, yeah. I didn't yeah, read it. I don't think I read the Padme ones. I read the first two, I think, mm. or the first one. Or something. Because Princess of Alderaan was after. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is but the next best thing. It, it's strange because, like, the in canon novels for Star Wars have really been hit or miss. Mm -hmm. And as a Star Wars fan, it's I, I find it difficult. I don't know about you. I find yeah. it difficult to, to really figure out where on that line acceptable versus. At least it's Star Wars. You know, at least we got something. <laughs> yeah. Because if it's great, then it's great, and it's easy to mm -hmm. tell. But if it's not great, then you're just like, well, but at least we got something. At least they're paying at attention in some At least some something way. might happen. And that, yeah. that's honestly, that's been my biggest problem with the um, High Republic shit. Like, I didn't oh, even yeah. bother with anything else. Because <laughs> it's like, hey, cool, at least it's Star Wars, and this is where they're leading with, you know, supposedly the yeah. new uh, trilogy. But yeah. then it's just Disney in some spots, and... <laughs> But not good Disney. Um, okay, so I think let's let's start with initial impressions. Okay, and just go through our normal review. You know, tip so for tat. this book for me was hard up until chapter twelve, and it's funny as shit. Cause I, you know, we were texting early that morning, and I'm yep. just like, man, I'm just not fucking feeling it. Went to school, got to chapter twelve, stopped what I was doing while I was fucking doing schoolwork well, and was like, oh my God, <laughs> whoa, okay, so this is Star Wars, holy shit. And it was pretty much nonstop after that. So it it, it was hard to get into for me, mm -hmm. but finishing it wasn't shit. Like I, it was, I I made time to finish it. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I, I didn't have uh, any issues. As soon as uh, Lando Calrissian comes on the page, I was dialed in. I pretty much blocked out everything that we know is going to happen in the sequel trilogy, mm -hmm. and I just did my damnedest to sort of hone in yeah. on what this story is about, and and not really let what comes after spoil anything for me. Yeah. And for the most part, I was really successful. I, I think what helped for me was that last shot novel with Han and Lando. Yeah. Because like reflecting on that Lando Calrissian, it sort of. It sapped away the the depression of the land that we got in uh, Rise of Skywalker, mm -hmm. at least for me, and so it made it really uh, tolerable. <laughs> That's that is definitely the first thing I thought with this land was tolerable. it was tolerable because this helps make that character in the movie understandable. Yeah, um, like why the fuck is this? God of industry and suave ass motherfucker just hiding on some random desert planet. Yeah. It makes sense. It's not like he's just randomly there. No, mm -hmm. he's there's a reason he's there and it makes sense. And for him to be almost defeated when we first see him in the Rise of Skywalker, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, now I can accept that more. Yeah. So it it definitely did help make certain things palatable. Well, let's let's sort of hit the story beats of of what this novel is about, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So it, it initially opens with Lando, mm -hmm. and we learn that he uh, has like lost his daughter. Yeah. Of all insane things, now it, it's been a couple of weeks since I've read this. It was where she just left, right? No, she was kidnapped. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. But it didn't, did it start like that? I thought it was like later on, it was sort of almost- It was almost, him like reflecting It was a chronicle it. of almost like halfway through the book of him getting to the point where she disappeared. And then that was his reason for going so hard on trying to find, you know, spoiler, Ray and her family. Right, but wasn't it like at the very beginning when he was at that bar in that off-beaten- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah poker the planet story. and he was yeah. actually doing well in the game and then they tried to draw him back in. Mm -hmm. Like this is, the, this is the Lando Calrissian that we saw in Solo. Yeah, except straight up. aged. And losing. Yeah, yeah. Doing <laughs> he was getting his ass poorly. kicked and getting ready to fucking turn tail and run. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> uh, but then he started overhearing this rando Ochi of Bestoon yeah. who he doesn't really know anything yeah. about. And if you didn't read any of the comics with Ochi in it, you would have the impression that I had that why would anyone give a fuck about this guy? He didn't seem threatening at all to me. Yeah, no. Throughout the entire book, he was a piece of shit. Like, he was... <laughs> so... He was comparable to Boba Fett in the original movies. Wow. Cool in theory, but useless. Except I didn't think he was cool. I, I, didn't, I didn't like like how they described his his look. I didn't like anything about him. I did. Like wow. it made sense. Well, especially if you go with like the hardcore, like almost like the um, like uh, not reform like. The newer version of what the Sith are. Like, right, if you're right, looking right, right, at, right. like, the Inquisitorian shit like that, like, they're all essentially just mutilated for the dark side. Right. And even though he's not a Force-sensitive user, he's still a part of the Sith. Yeah. Like, from pre-Empire era, so... Yeah, like they hired him sense. to hunt down Jedi yeah. after Order 66. Which I still, I don't buy that he's a fucking Jedi killer. Like, well, that's what I'm saying is, like, if you're that good, mm -hmm. you can hunt down Jedi masters. Mm -hmm. Cut to this book where he's completely ineffective yeah. at everything he does. He's a fucking drunk. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> he's like, ah, glory days, I was so good. <laughs> Fuck them Jedi. <laughs> I'm going to hire people to do my dirty work, but I'm going to yeah. carry around a dagger and stab people. So I, I did yeah. jump to Lando initially because he's mm -hmm. my favorite part of this beginning of this novel, but mm -hmm. the real beginning is Ochi of Bestoon being approached by the Sith Eternal. Mm -hmm. And so the only cue we ever have of what the Sith Eternal are is from Rise of Skywalker yeah. and seeing those crowds. It's like the stadium of the Emperor doing the worst stand-up show of, ever, <laughs> of all time. You know, I mean, the, they were the riveted, so... They was it really it. that bad? They were, into, they were way into it. At least he knows his audience. <laughs> Good point. Okay. <laughs> still, yeah, but still. Yeah. <laughs> Always been an argument, but yeah, but still. Uh, so, you know, we, we even now, we don't really know much of anything about mm -hmm. them other than it's a cult that the Sith have always supposedly had, and they only just recently appeared for us as the yeah. audience members to understand. Which, Legends, Star Wars, I mean, that makes sense. That's something that we have always experienced in... Um, like the EU and stuff, well now Legends, yeah. um, even up until the very finale before Disney took over with um, like, oh God, what were they? Um, the Lost Tribe of the Sith. Right. So it's very, right. Right, like right, right, right. it's on par for the brands. And I, I do hope they expand on it. Because um, I mean, of course we all know how it ends, but that mm -hmm. doesn't matter. There's still, even after this book, because this is right in between The Force Awakens and yeah. Return. So this is uh, 21 years um, ABY, so there's a lot of room where they can delve into the lore and stuff, and I really hope they do. Yeah. Um, like, this definitely was sort of a, a little testicle tease to, you know, pique your interest. And I hope they go somewhere peak. with it. Yeah, I peaked it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else did. Um, so Ochi is approached by the Sith mm -hmm. Eternal, and they're asking, look, the whole thing with Ochi is he was, he was nearly deathly wounded and he mm -hmm. wants nothing more, and discarded by the Sith. And he wants mm -hmm. nothing more than to get to Exil in order, Exit? Exegol. Goal. Yeah. Exegol. Exegol. In order to uh, find out how to live forever, because supposedly the Sith mm -hmm. Eternal are eternal. Like yeah. they, if you can get to Exegol, and you can get in the Sith's, the cult of the Sith's uh, good graces, then they'll give you the secret. Mm -hmm. Which is, not, can we like sort of put a pin in this really quick? Because the entire premise of the dark side is searching for eternal life. Mm -hmm. And Darth Sidious, eludes that his master, Plagueis, knew it, mm. but that he didn't give it to his um, his uh, apprentice, him. Mm -hmm. And so 
why the fuck would he go through all that rigmarole if there was actually a way to live forever? Well, that's also assuming that Sidious isn't Bane. Right. <laughs> I, so this is deep <laughs> legends lore. This is, well, and this is some shit that I saw brought up recently. Like, if you go through um, the now canonical stuff, like, it's possible that that was Bane through everything. It's just the I don't believe it, yeah. but I like the idea of it being that. The way that the Sith and this, the Sith Eternal and this, were chanting different Dark Lords of the Sith's mm -hmm. names as sort of like homage, like, they're, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they were, Hail Revan, Hail uh, Plague, you know, they were just sort of going through this whole list of canonical legends and some Sith names that I'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. they, they were clearly setting up that these people existed before, so I guess the question then becomes, are they the Sith that projected their essence into the other Dark mm -hmm. Lord of the Sith's body? And sort of, like, yeah. down the line. Because back in Old Republic era in Legends, like, the the Emperor would absorb people into yeah. his body in order to live forever. Mm -hmm. But Bane, his whole big secret in that trilogy of books, and this is a spoiler, you should read those books, they're yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Period. was that he would transfer his essence into his apprentice mm -hmm. in order to live forever. So the whole yeah. idea of the Sith is that, you know, the Jedi, they can become one with the Force. The Sith, they can only attach themselves to artifacts that they use Sith alchemy in order to sort mm -hmm. of attach essence, bits of their essence. But it's not really them 100%. It's just parts of them, that yeah. the, the, the torture, the hatred parts of them. And we saw that with... Um, uh, well, shit, that was Revan, right? That Yoda saw in the Clone Wars? No, so Revan no, was, was actually... That was Bane. So Revan actually was in the Clone Wars, but as a deleted scene, because they were going to make him right. canonical at that point. Right, right, right. Um, but just a little uh, uh, backtracking, like just one thing that I did love about the book is when they are chanting those names. Mm -hmm. Like, that made certain Sith Lords that were not canonical, yep. canonical. Like, Nihilus is now canonical. Yep. And that... I, I'm getting goosebumps even just thinking nope. about it. It's, nope. I, it doesn't matter at all to anybody, but it's so fucking awesome. Well, for the Legends fans, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, well, it's a big deal. Big fan of the Lord of Hunger over here, so it's a big deal to me, but yeah. Um, our wives are right off screen. Can you guys maybe tune in and make sure that our audio is coming through? I've never done this setup on a live stream before, and so I just want to make sure that it's They're working. just trying to tune us out right now. Yeah, well, yeah. they're effectively doing it until now. <laughs> <laughs> I interrupted them. Um... And just, just let me know if it's working or not. So, um, Ochi wants to go to Exegol mm -hmm. in order to find out how to live forever. The Sith Eternal just happened to, like, sort of tap him. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Tap him, cool. uh, tap him on the shoulder so that uh, they're like, look, we've got, we, we, we need one last gig from you, man. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like every sort of last action hero type film where the dudes run his course. No one really gives a damn about yep. him. But they come in like, you got one more adventure. For yeah, me. you know that one thing you've been looking for your entire life? Yeah. We got it for you. We're going to help you. And so he goes to his old crew that he used to run with and asks them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the point where Lando Calrissian overhears Ochi talking mm -hmm. about how he needs to go kidnap this kid, that, this family that this the Sith are looking for. Mm -hmm. So he, Lando's thinking, oh shit, Sith, I thought they were all dead. They should all be dead by now. The mm -hmm. Emperor died. My friend Luke killed him. And, um, you know, he, he's like, look, if, if I can, maybe this will give me some clue. If I can follow him to track down that kidnapped kid, then maybe somehow I can find my own. Mm -hmm. What really tears me up as a father is how you could, like, just, I, we don't understand the situation of how his daughter was kidnapped. Or taken from him. We don't understand the complexity of that. I don't feel like this book ever really fully got into it. It, it did a real quick description of she was there, then she wasn't, and then I spent the rest, like I've been spending the last whatever it was, 10 years or something trying yeah. to find her. I feel like it was Liam Neeson that was the Taken guy, right? Mm -hmm. He just needs to contact Qui-Gon Jinn's ghost. Yeah, pretty much. Just look, you got a set of skills. Hook a brother up. Right. I mean... I mean, that's... His shtick. It, it, just do it. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's literally the setup, though, mm -hmm. is that the Sith, ought, for obvious reasons, they want Ray and Ray's dad and mom mm -hmm. because Ray's dad, and this is what I really did appreciate in this, is that 
it actually gave us a little bit of context mm -hmm. about Ray's dad, you know, the Emperor's yeah. initial clone that was not Force-sensitive and had to live this really sort of tortured existence on Exegol. Mm -hmm. And that was really interesting to me. Yeah. I, I honestly, I wish they would have done more with him, like yeah. a little bit of his backstory. Like when it got to that point in the book where it was flashbacks of his childhood on Exegol and then going to the present time, it's like, fuck, give me more of that. That's great. Like yeah. I... Because that's something that we've gotten in Legends for decades has been uh, Palpatine's clones and stuff and yep. where they go. Yep. Um, even his actual blood, which, you know, might or might not have a single eye or three eyes. Um, <laughs> like, this was the most realistic uh, clone, child, whatever of his that we've had. And I, I loved it. Yep. I wish they would have gone further with him. I loved how he had to make friends with uh, some of the. It was was it like the traders that would come in, mm -hmm. drop off supplies and stuff. Like if you could just imagine living in Horrorville, and you're just a normal dude. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like I hate clowns. Yeah. But they're everywhere. Yeah. You know. And so like the person who brings the bag, the groceries, mm -hmm. you're just like, can I please talk to you? <laughs> like. Yeah. You're you the know? only one that's not like fucked up and like scarred and terrifying to look at. Yeah, it's those are a droid. Yeah. Those are his only friends. Which is just, I, I don't know, I, I loved that because putting my, putting my mind in his position, it was refreshing and it was completely different than anything we ever had. And it gave much needed context to, to Rey, you know, mm -hmm. where she comes from. Yeah. Um, we get to see a really, really young Rey and we really see that the majority of all of her talents and skills come from her mom. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Not her dad at all. I mean, that that's realistically, it's just Star Wars in general with yeah. the exception of, you know, Anakin's kids because, you know, mom was pointless. Yeah, whatever, but yeah. Yeah, no, I, I dug that. Like, he was just like, oh, I'm the Emperor's son. <laughs> and she's like, I'll oh, fuck your shit up. I'll take care of everything, you <laughs> pussy. And that was pretty much the mom. Like, oh no, the ship's broken. <laughs> Fuck, I got this shit, kid. Don't worry. Like, I, yeah, I love that aspect of that, like, their relationship. Yeah. He just always, you know, it's like every guy's relationship with a woman. It really you know, is. It's like, I'm going to defer to you because you clearly know it. Mm -hmm. I'm putting on a front. Yeah, you're, you're really the real it. adult in the relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I really, really loved the the family unit of Ray, and we, we really got a, an inside look because... Up until this novel, all we saw was Ray being held by Unkar Plutt mm -hmm. reaching out to a ship fleeing. Yeah. We never understood the context of it. It was never explained in the films, which would have made a lot of sense to do so. It sort of was. Well, like, the like second we got... film was the only time we got the first bit of it, and it was uh, Kylo just fucking with her, like, your, your parents were junk traders, mm -hmm. which, no, they well, I thought it was thieves. in that third one that we got a flash of her being held back and the parents like walking off on their own accord. Or was that the off? second one? I don't remember that at all. I swear to God that happened. Well, anyway, but whatever, this added yeah. context. Yeah, this actually, yeah, we know one, why she's there. And that's the thing. Like with this novel, they did have to do a lot of, oh, you know, yeah. explaining how shit happened in between a, a lot of bridges. Fucking, you know, all <laughs> that stuff. And I was honestly worried that it was going to be shit. And a lot of it was like, you could feel all right, this was them tying that loose end. Yeah. A lot of it, though, was like, okay, cool, I'll accept that. Mm. And that, that was one of them. Like, that was a successful, you know, tie between what we last got with the movies mm. and then making it make sense. So, yeah. yeah. So we've got um, Ochi looking for that family. Mm -hmm. We get to see the family doing their best to stay away from the Sith and just trying to live their lives, just mm -hmm. just trying to exist, but they're always on the run because the Sith are after them, yeah. because ultimately the Emperor wants Rey, which I, I don't want to get into the, the, <laughs> the strangeness of Rise of Skywalker with that, but um, then we get Lando, because he heard the word Sith, going to uh, Luke's temple and being like, hey, so I need your help, <laughs> um, the Sith are back, and there's this family that is desperate in need for someone to, to protect them. And so the entire film is really Lando doing his best, best to help this uh, Ray's family flee Ochi, mm -hmm. like escape from Ochi's machinations, the entire, entire book. Mm -hmm. And Luke, 
agreeing to come along and then getting sidetracked when he realizes that, oh shit, the Sith are back. Yeah. I need to go deal with the Sith. So you go deal with the family and mm. I'll deal with the Sith. And what we realize is that the title of the book is not the Sith Eternal mm -hmm. and them trying to find Rey. It's that there's another Dark Lord of the Sith that has actually attached itself to a helm, much like um, we got in the comics, if yeah. you guys ever read any of those um, comics. It was um, Darth Murder. Mammon or some Ma shit like that? Yeah, it was Mammary. You know Darth what? I believe it, yeah. I mean, it straight it was, up looked like a tit helmet, like so yeah. It. No, and I loved that. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to mm -hmm. hate that as soon as we realized, oh, okay, it's a Dark Lord attached to a helmet. Ooh. And then it kept going. I'm like, all right, cool. And then when it goes to the flashback of him prior to yeah. putting himself in the helmet, it's like, all right, cool. I'm sold. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. If I could just get a, a series of novels of Luke, because it alludes to it with Lor Santeca and Luke, how mm -hmm. they went around the galaxy searching for ancient Sith lore to collect it and ancient Jedi artifacts and, and uh, holocron, holocrons. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's like, that's what I, that's all I've ever wanted is that Luke in that age to yeah. go adventure in the galaxy. Well, the thing is, it's not like they don't understand that that's successful. Like, <laughs> there's, uh, pre-Disney, your average run would be at least eight to nine books, if not in the 20s. Mm -hmm. They could easily do that. Like oh, yeah. a fucking serial series of just, you know, three, four hundred page wacky Luke adventure. Uh, adv yeah. yeah. Luke Skywalker yeah. adventures. Holy shit, I can't talk It'd today. Be dope. I'd be down. I, I'd, I'd buy every single one of them and yeah. eat it up. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to change anything. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem I think I'm having with Disney is they're feeling like every single book has to change the way we look at the saga. Mm. No, we just need a fucking fun book. Mm. <laughs> it's true. Like, that's, that's it. it. It is weird because we, as Star Wars fans, we're easy. We're simple. Mm -hmm. We're not asking for, you know, in, incredible tied together fucking galaxy wide storylines. Gives a couple one-offs that are just great stories, you know? I really liked Last Shot. I thought this did a pretty good job about it feeding that, you know, fe scratching that itch that we have. Mm -hmm. I just wish they would do more of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the more they dove into that... I, I wish... Sorry, guys. I, ha I had to have it plugged in. I got notes here for the name of that Sith Lord. Yeah, I probably should have <laughs> scrolled down to that. Um, well, and that's the thing is he was in Panshard. Yeah, he wasn't Lord actually a like that was the thing is they kept setting him up that he's not an actual Lord of the Sith because he wasn't a part of the Sith religion right. per se, but he was like a viceroy of a planet that essentially he was like fucking Caligula, I guess. He was, yeah, he was brutal, um, brutal, and it just like that shit was cool. <laughs> like he didn't he didn't want. To conquer the galaxy, mm -hmm. he just wanted people to suffer. Yeah, that was it. And he just—he was—he was a sadist. Mm -hmm. like that's, that's really all. Yeah, it was. It was, it was like Star Wars sallow, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that it really did a wonderful job of is bridging that gap between the aftermath trilogy and um, the sequel trilogy because, you know, we got these acolyte of the beyond and. You know, as fans, we didn't know what the hell they were. They never mm -hmm. really explored it after Chuck Wendig's trilogy, yeah. the Aftermath trilogy. And so to have that pulled in and that um, the, it was, um, oh, what was the name of the, Comat was the Acolyte of the, Be oh, dang it. Mm, so see. Kiza of Corellia was the leader yeah, of the Acolytes were. of the Beyond. Mm -hmm. um, she was the one that uh, had the helmet put on her, right? And the ancient... Uh, Exim Panshard took yeah, her yeah. over. Yeah. Um, anyway, the Acolytes of Beyond were just a group of pretty much just kids who mm -hmm. just really, they were like goth kids. They just really into Vampire the Masquerade, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just Straight up, they weren't force sensitive. That's the no, thing, because yeah. they were just like, oh, Sith, ugh, that's, fucking, that's spooky, I want to be it. At, which I get. I, I'm there right now. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah and UP Tashu, the advisor to Emperor Palpatine, he ended up rounding these kids up and, you know, sort of directing them. 
And so they would go collect uh, artifacts like lightsaber hilts and uh, masks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all the acolytes beyond loved to hide themselves behind masks and sort of homage to Darth Vader and, and some of the ancient Sith Lords of, yeah. of greatness uh, in history. Um, God, this just makes me want to read the Aftermath novels again. I know! <laughs> the Aftermath <laughs> novels are so, so good. good. If you were yeah. pissed about the sequel trilogy, all you have to do is read Aftermath. Yeah, Because that's Straight up. a sequel trilogy. And then if you want to really be pissed, the only thing that was used from that, I mean, aside from now the um, the kid, little goth kids, is Cobb Vanth. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. you mean Mr. Bones, goddammit. Mr. It Bones. doesn't even make sense because he's gone, but goddammit, I want a Mr. Oh, Bones no, series. It, it makes perfect sense to me. I don't care what. It just <laughs> you, they're, All they're doing is making up new droids every new film or every new mm -hmm. series anyway. So bring in Mr. Bones. Let's do this, yeah. people. Like, how is he so alive? Great. I thought he was dead. He's nope. a droid. Like, there's <laughs> exactly. always a way. There's always a way. Uh, fucking R2 can do it. So can Mr. Bones, goddammit. Um, yeah, so th this story did a really great job of setting up all of these different uh, forces that were all trying mm. to accomplish different goals dealing with the same people. And it created this really interesting uh, web of interaction across the galaxy, primarily between Lando, Luke, this Sith Lord, and Ochi. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, there, there's something about the, the Star Wars planet hopping uh, adventure where even Luke finds himself in some precarious positions yes, from time to does. time. That I thought was really exciting. What I never really fully understood is at the very beginning, that excerpt that was released by Disney about this novel uh, setting up, and if you haven't read this, this is a big spoiler, but you're here watching, so you should know. Um, Anakin's ghost comes back in a force vision of Luke arriving at Exegol, mm -hmm. and the Sith Eternal ghosts that exist there are sort of coming up, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, Wraith style. It was straight up Ring Wraith. Like, yeah. I, that's, uh, that's chapter 12. That's where I'm sitting there fucking just, God damn it, <laughs> that's so fucking good. <laughs> yeah, it was. In Weathertop. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Um, and like Anakin, like loses his connection mm -hmm. to the Force, which that doesn't make any sense to me. What does this <sighs> new Sith Lord have to do with any of that? It was the disruption because the thing was uh, part of the reason why he was visiting Luke was because he was at one of those uh, I forget what the fuck they called it, but the little the, the rock that Grogu was on right. where he was calling out. Like uh, Luke discovered one of those at the place that he was at um, and that's how he ended up going to Exegol so it wasn't like a vision it was actually a force projection like he was literally right, right. there but he was still there and um, because of the dark side disruption that's what kind of you know knocked him out of the loop but I, I thought it was crazy though that it went from being Hayden Christensen um, Vader yeah. to start turning into where it's Vader redeemed and like that was sort of like showing the power that was being drawn and the energy that was being taken. So I thought that was pretty fucking cool. I, I loved the optics that it painted. Mm -hmm. It just didn't make any logical sense why this Sith Lord existence would make that big of a disruption in the Force so that the Force ghosts could no longer manifest or that Anakin was being pulled between himself. Mm -hmm. Between the versions well, it, of himself, it, so we get we get that in um, in force physics, anyways. Is like the whole clouding of presences and all that shit. Like, I mean, Palpatine did that from day one. That's how he rose to where he was. Is you know clouding the force minds of you know everybody else around him. Hmm. So I didn't think it was that weird that he got pushed out. Like it just made sense, especially being on a Sith planet. Supposedly the Sith planet. Right. Yeah. So it. But uh, would it have been better? I would have loved to see a sort of a cap put on that, where Luke returns to his temple and he sees Anakin. Mm. Oh you yeah, know, no, just that like a great. nice little bookend to say you did it, good job, son. Mm -hmm. um, don't kill Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like little knock on the chin. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like hey, uh, your nephew. Um, don't don't try to murder well, him. Well, the, the problem with that is that's very hypocritical like hey you know don't kill kids <laughs> i did but don't don't follow in my footsteps don't do what i did <laughs> yeah you know the little emo boy just just leave yeah, him alone. he's like 
you got to kill a few kids to make an omelet. That's, just, <laughs> <laughs> that's the saying, right? That's, that's a, what are you, you going to do? Just a few kids. Um, okay, so what were your favorite... I mean, that's really the story. And it really you know, is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the adventure part of it that really mm-hmm. is the bulk of it. And there's no way we can do justice to all that stuff. Um, like, even if we were to go beat by beat for the, the droid planet, right. or uh, not the droid planet, it was the, the Mon Cal cruiser, that's what it was, the down one. That whole fucking the scene. The radiation thing? Yeah, yeah, Jesus fucking Christ, was that good. But It was um, just an interesting setup mm-hmm. to, to have that, the fact that there's this massive environmental disaster mm-hmm. without any sort of, like, real world... You know, they're trying to tell a greater narrative or something. Mm-hmm. But there's this horrible uh, uh, disaster that this one pre... You know, Luke rescued this acolyte of the beyond who ended up sort of exiling herself to mm-hmm. this planet. Um, him and Lando end up going there. But yeah, it creates this really wonderful um, atmosphere and environment that you, you're sort of confined by mm-hmm. that we never really saw before. And that's the first time we really saw the difference between Ochi and this new Sith Lord. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, as far as, like, favorite parts of the book, that, honestly, aside from when he does do the Force uh, bounce or whatever to um, Exegol and fights those wraiths, like, that whole thing, as soon as they touch down and they're cool with Chick Face, like, going through the radiation, Chick, also, I name. already forgot her fucking it's name. Totally name. That's the thing. Like, they throw a lot of <laughs> fucking names out in this book it's and it drives me insane. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and I'm already on to like another book in, after the one that I finished after this. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's hard. Um, but like that whole thing up until they leave that planet, mm-hmm. that was my favorite bit, especially that battle where he's trying to save her. Yeah. Like, look, I understand you're a Sith and you're a fucking badass, but come on, I want to make you not dead. That was so... And everything just melting in on her. Because mm-hmm. um, like that's one thing I will say that they've gotten right, um, and really it was the Clone Wars that started it. But the whole idea of the repercussions of war, like yeah. we didn't necessarily see those in any of the other films, but with the Clone Wars, with further books, um, and even with um, uh, what's that one stupid one, uh, Bad Batch, like you see the aftermath of the battles and the right. how it treats the planets and shit. So that I yeah, that whole bit was great. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, we really on live action there's only like throwaway lines in solo. Mm-hmm. And he's like they were here first. Like what, what what are we trying to accomplish here? You know, we're destroying this place. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate that stuff. Um that's the that's the real strength of sci-fi, I think. Mm-hmm. Is when you're you're talking about the genuine consequences to the people in the periphery of the story, mm. because that's that's the real repercussions of war. You know, the, like the fallout that, that people have to try to exist in, try to find a way of living mm. in those confines. That's the real tragedy of war. You know, it sucks the soldiers and the sacrifices, but like you still have to pick up your life and raise your kids at the end of the day. Right. Like, how the fuck do you do that in these? Terrible, terrible situations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I love that type of stuff too. I think my favorite part was this new Sith Lord because it was very different than all the other Sith Lords we've gotten. Definitely. Like Momin, his whole thing was art, creating mm-hmm. art through destruction and, and celebrating that destructive art. Yeah. Um, but all the other Sith Lords, it was about personal power and gain. And it does mm-hmm. this really wonderful job of setting up Emperor Palpatine or Sidious as uh, only wanting um, to be known as master. Oh, mm-hmm. wait, no, that's a different book that I'm thinking of. <laughs> that's the second book that I read <laughs> since I finished this one. Never mind. I was like, I don't remember that. Like, like, cool, that right? um, that's the Tales of the Jedi and Sith book. Anyway, yeah. so... <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> it's I'm, really I'm conflating the bunch of different kinds of stories. Um, but it, it does a really good job of, of setting up this... Uh, new Sith Lord in mm-hmm. a new way who uses this uh, weapon that's out of the Tales of the Sith or the Dark Tales of the Sith anthology or something like that. Mm-hmm. I never read the book when it came out, but I've now since got it on hold, uh, so I'm going to be reading it next. But it, it, how it's like this weird scimitar shape. Yeah, I, I don't hate that. I don't. Well, hate in it. the Legends, we had like force whips. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, like... 
it's a thing. So yeah. I didn't. I don't care about that stuff either. I just think it's interesting when it's not the standard. First of all, I take that back. It the Inquisitor lightsabers yeah, blow. I was gonna say anything but, but the Inquisitor else. lightsabers <laughs> are great. Like yeah. even Maul's is not that yeah. terrible. Like the double sided one. And honestly, what made the double sided blade for me yeah. wasn't Darth Maul. It was. Um, Oh my God! How did I forget her name? Um, Bastila. Oh. Yeah, Revan's wife. Yeah. No. Uh, she's... Old Republic too. Yeah. That's the Old Republic too. That's her, right? What? Is she in two or one? I think she's in two. Yeah, she's in two. I don't know. Anyway, Bastila. Whatever. Era. Anyways, that shit. Yeah, her rocking a fucking double yellow blade. Yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, that's why yellow became my favorite color. It's from the. That, that old stuff. Oh, I thought it was the bandana in your pocket. <laughs> I don't know what that reference is. <laughs> okay. He'll tell me That's later. That's right. I'll He'll tell you later. Me. I'll tell you later. He's always saying references that just go <laughs> right over my head. That's I'm fine. like, I'm an old man who knows nothing about anything. That's so fine. All I know is fucking nothing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll... I'll <laughs> uh, just tell me what it is now on camera so I know. I, it, it means you like water sports. Oh. Yeah, Definitely not. Go go to a Definitely gay not. bar, yellow bandana in your pocket. Yeah, you might get your oh, leg gross. peed on. Yeah. And now everybody knows. Not a fan. <laughs> um, Jana's corner. <laughs> <laughs> Those little tips you can expect from Jana's corner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's your least favorite part of this novel? I want to say it was the build-up. Because uh, initially, when I first started the book, it was Ray Because they start right off with Ray Like, they don't build yeah. up to it being, like, a, about her and her family trying to get the fuck away. Um, so it just felt like it took too long to start. And I think it's my own personal bias, because I really haven't been a fan of much of the Star Wars books that have come out. Um, mm -hmm. Alphabet Squadron was okay. Um, I feel like there was one... Whatever Wedge was in pre uh, Rise of Skywalker, that was good. Or was, yeah, that wasn't Alphabet. I don't but know. there was a couple Alphabet Squadron ones. Yeah, but it, it, Alphabet was uh, post Return, I think. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember Wedge um, being anything I read. But there were there was something that Wedge was in there, like they, it was essentially them trying to do the X Wing novels, and didn't quite hit the mark, but it was good. Okay. Um, but. Yeah, like as soon as it, it picked up and it got to the actual adventure part of it, like it was just great. Like I seriously would stay up late reading this book, like fuck, at least one more chapter and then I can go to bed. Oh, wow. And then I'm struggling because it's you know one thirty and <laughs> I gotta go to school. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, fuck. All right, I don't get sleep tonight. <laughs> so it was it was genuinely a great read. All right. So what was your least favorite part? Least favorite? It was the build up. Yep, sorry. <laughs> See, again, I love the book, but yeah, it was it was a build up. It was getting to the point where I enjoyed the book. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. it, it felt too long. Um, yeah, mine were little things that that made it. My least favorite part is I didn't fully comprehend or accept um, the disturbance in the Force being so great that it affected Anakin. That that mm -hmm. kind of bugged me a little bit. Um, I didn't. It actually made me like Ray more because it made me mm -hmm. think of Ray in terms of. Did you ever watch uh, Legend of Korra? So it's a sequel to Avatar, the the cartoon. Oh, no. Um, series. It's a phenomenal. Dave Filoni worked on Avatar before he worked on Clone Wars, mm -hmm. and it was from that animated show that he came over and started Clone Wars from. But um, the sequel to that is a, a series called Legend of Korra, and it's got the Avatar is like the hero of the world basically and they mm -hmm. their spirit or their essence transfers to a new generation after they live their life and die and she just happens to be the new one it's like the very buddhist monk type stuff um but you know we're introduced to to cora the first time where she like comes in and just like busts out these superpowers she's like i'm the avatar deal with it you know like just being this super badass little girl cool. i hated it in force awakens when she was able to do anything and everything and best you know, trained Dark Lords of the Sith, or not Dark Lords of the Sith, but whatever Kylo was, fucking Knight or Ren, <laughs> Hero or whatever. <laughs> One of the Lost Boys. <laughs> yeah, he was fucking Lost Boy, that's exactly right. Um, but in this, it finally added that necessary context. Like, no, your mom was a genius mm -hmm. uh, tech 
woman. Yeah. And so I appreciated that the dad, you know, she got her blood from uh, Palpatine. And so, okay, like that's not really how I ever saw it before, even though I accepted well, Anakin to Luke. I was going to say, that's, in, in yeah, that's nothing new, though. Yeah. Like so, many chlorians being a part of the, uh, the bloodline. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that really made it for me. Um, I don't know if I answered the question or not, but that's it. Anakin. <laughs> Anakin, yeah. The it's, that's the thing about this book is you want to find something to bitch about. And there's little things. Like, there, I it's... fucking hated Ochi of Bastoon. Yeah. And the fact yeah, yeah. that He's it's douche. not Ochi, it's always Ochi of Bastoon. Motherfucker, I don't even know where you're from every time you goddamn talk. Mm-hmm. I love that they brought that up, too. too. I, yeah, that was great. <laughs> That was when I went from being oh, annoyed what does that mean? to being, oh, okay, they're making fun of this motherfucker. Yeah. Cool, whatever. You keep calling him that. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it did. It, it brought up some new lore for mm-hmm. as far as the Sith are concerned, which I always loved. Yeah. Oops, well, like even like, even the dagger. Like I didn't give a shit about the dagger in the movies. Like, oh, cool. I still think that's a you piece go of shit. like this and you can see the Death Star. Stole oh, from the Goonies. Right there. Stole it from the Goonies. Straight the fuck up. Just ridiculous. Good movie to steal from. Bad way to steal. Yeah. Um, but how it like bleeds your essence and shit, like that was pretty fucking cool. That was. And it, that it's hungry and mm-hmm. it sort of like it would, then the dagger would sort of compel, almost like he was controlling Ochi in some cases mm-hmm. where he was like, I have got to feed this. Ah, mm-hmm. that, that was a really good part. I forgot it was about fucking dope. Oh yeah. man. This is the problem with being an avid reader. <laughs> Is yeah, that it really is. You read book after book after book, and then, you know, you, we do these shows like once a month, <laughs> and we forget stuff. Well, my problem is I'll go from like series, like mm-hmm. I'm going through the Vampire Chronicles right now. So I'm reading Anne Rice, <laughs> which is a lot of stuff just thrown at you really fast, and it's all riveting, so you have to absorb every single word. And then this is like my palate cleanser when I need mm-hmm. a break from being like, oh my God, this sucks, I'm not going to get any more of these because she's gone. Um, so that's what this was. This was the palate cleanser to remind nice. me. Oh yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. There's other stuff out but, there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then you go, oh, okay, well that's done. I'm going to read this next book, but I'm going to remember everything. <laughs> I don't need to write it down. <laughs> yeah. And then... Never works. And then you record an episode. Yeah. And this is what you get. <laughs> um, I don't think we've ever done like a rating system on Star Wars stuff yet. If, if no, you we haven't, did actually. do like a rating, what what would you give this as a sort of? I don't know what the rating would be. Like, well, severed arms, definitely. How many severed arms would you give this? Okay, so are we just doing like the classic four point scale? Sure. Okay, so if we're doing the four point scale, I would give this. I give it two and a thumb. Like it was. Wow, uh, that's that's not as good as I thought. Problem is, it's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> okay. That's like. Okay, if we're so if you're we're comparing diff- this to other Star Wars books of the past, or I have you? to. Okay, so if if we're separating, um, so it's on if, if we're keeping Legends era separate right. from Disney era, okay. So okay, so we if have to compare this only in canon. Okay, so if we're gonna consider this Disney era, I I would give it three, a solid three, because it was really good. I might read it again. <laughs> Two and a thumb. Yeah. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, all right. Two and a thumb in Legends, three in Canada. There we go. Is that it? That that's what we'll say. I didn't give it that much thought. To be honest. <laughs> um, in Canon, this is one of my favorite standalones. Um, mm-hmm. But then it's only been aftermath is like up here. Yeah. Last shot and this are sort of down here for me. So I'll give it. I'll give it three severed arms also in Canon. In Legends, I don't think this would rate. Um, very well either. Just I don't even, so many great. I don't even think this novels. would be on even on par yeah. with anything. Like I, if we're comparing like to Legends solely of legends, stuff is so good. I, this wouldn't even be scored. Yeah. Period. Because it's not that good. Like even yeah. some of the throwaway novels of like you know say like the New Jedi Order, um, or like even the X Wing series, like something that's a smaller run. You gotta have one book that's not as good as everything yeah. else. It's still not even remotely as good as those kinds of books. Yeah, those those final series that they were putting out when they were finally bought out and they stopped mm-hmm. writing them, those were great. Yeah, no, Fate, the Fate I, of the Jedi like series. that was one of the most amazing Star Wars series ever. Like it opened up 
so much. Mm -hmm. Like if Disney would have went with that and just said, fuck it, we don't want the old guard, let's do something new, they could have easily picked up at the end of Fate and it yeah. would have just been a fucking hit. Like yeah. I truly believe that. Yeah, I think so too. The series did well enough that it, it speaks for itself too. Yeah. All right. Um, well, normally we you know talk about Star Wars news and stuff like that in these episodes, um, but we are clearly just sort of winging it today because of I the mean, situation. we got news. We got fucking Andor at the end of next month. It's gonna be good. They that just barely, looks awesome, they right? Just barely, I, I was sold when they said Andor. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Rogue One we was get, great. We get Cassie and Andor. We get K2SO. I don't give a shit. It could be a stupid buddy comedy of just them. I'm going to eat up every fucking episode. Yeah. But they did just drop the episode list. Uh, so I, I want to say it was 12 episodes. Yeah. So it's going to be a season, yeah. nice, solid season. So I'm, I'm fucking really excited for that. I think they already have it planned out and greenlit for three seasons, I think. And I'm... 100% okay with that. And they're doing like time jumps between episodes in some cases, which I'm totally fine with as well. Well, um, that's what that's the the nice thing about series like this is it's from the outside of the Skywalker mm -hmm. ser uh, saga, so they can do shit like that and fill in the gaps. Yeah, one thing that I've seen um, just based off of the, the trailer that we got, but also the comments of everyone else that I've sort of seen online that I, I sort of fall behind is that Andor for some reason, like, like Obi-Wan... It felt really contained in the volume mm -hmm. as far as the scale of what they were putting on screen. Rogue One, or I'm sorry, Andor feels like it's really outside of the volume. Mm -hmm. Like they went to actual physical locations and shot. And that's, Damn. you know, I, I feel like with, with Mandalorian, the way it was presented and they developed the volume for it, I think it worked for what it was. But mm -hmm. we've fallen back on this with various commentary shows that we've done in the past. Practical effects are massively important, and yes, you can do that in the volume, but you're limited with scale and and, yeah. and and space. The Andor trailer looks like it broke those bounds, and they actually set up real sets out mm -hmm. in the world, and that makes a huge well, difference. It, for TV. it looked like like the scale we got with um, Jeddah. Yeah, that's yeah. what it reminded me of. Was when they're up on that plateau like that's like it's so open and it's so real yeah you can't get that any other way like it yeah. just always falls flat i'm definitely looking forward to that we mm -hmm. have a lot of star wars series coming uh, mm -hmm. down the pipeline too um just this year we're getting three more so we're mm -hmm. getting andor there's the bad batch second season mm -hmm. uh there's one more i can't remember is it ahsoka was. this year or is it uh is it ahsoka? season three of mandalorian no, that's next year. Is I think it is year? Ahsoka. So it's, it's yeah. Andor, it's Bad Batch, and it's Ahsoka late this Christmas season, I think, mm -hmm. is she's coming out. So we've got a lot coming down the pipe. And you know with this channel, we, when it's a series ongoing, we like to do episode reviews, and so we won't be doing the monthly episodes. Um, and our episode reviews usually circle around a specific topic, like mm -hmm. today was a review of a book. But, um, you know, we do invite you to, of course, subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date on our weird interpretations of Star Wars. I know we're not as, we're not as edgelord as some people who hate everything but still can't stop talking I about it. I edge myself all the time with Star Wars, so whatever. <laughs> I'm so close. You just, you just got to so stop close. and then kind of punch yourself a little so it lasts a little <laughs> bit longer. Different type of edging <laughs> that I was thinking of, but yeah, I, I can dig it. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, subscribe for that. <laughs> if you want to edge with a yellow bandana in your back pocket, this is the channel for you. And if you guys haven't seen Cruising, everybody should watch Cruising. I don't know what that is. That's the reference I made with the okay. yellow bandana. Okay. Just, yeah. I will not be watching that. Oh, you should watch it. <laughs> it's a classic. All right. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to cover? Besides cruising, ah, <laughs> we got it. <laughs> read Aftermath. If you haven't fucking read For Aftermath, real. I can't really believe good. I have really to say good. that still. Really there's a really lot good. of people that haven't. It's and the that, best part of Legends. Yeah. Or like canon. Yeah, canon. Like, that was it. Like, that was, like, when I'm like, cool, Disney. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thank and you all yeah. so much for tuning in live or after the fact. Uh, once again, we really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, like the videos, and then click that stupid little bell to get notified about the next video that we're going to be putting out. Mm -hmm. uh, you can expect us to... I think the next time is going to be 
Andor, right? That probably would be, because that's 27th, I believe. Okay, yeah. So the next time is going to be the first episode or first two episodes of Andor Review. Mm -hmm. Hope you'll join us then. Until then, may the Force be with you. I'm out here, best dude. <laughs> For those that read the audiobook, that's what it sounds like. <laughs>